Another perfect landing. Your turn to make breakfast, Gromit. Eggs, I think. And toast with honey today. Step to it, lad. I'm famished. Hey! Eggs today, Gromit, not porridge. Huh? I'm going to have to put the safety lock back on. Honey pipe directly from the source. Everyone in town will want their own honey tap when word gets out. I'd like to help you with breakfast, lad, but it's all part of your training. Our new enterprise is getting off to a roaring start. We may even get an order today. Uh, has the mail arrived, Gromit? Well, what did the postman bring us then? Any orders? Hand it over, lad. Did you bring the mail, Gromit? Oh, I don't know. Final demand? I don't know. This payment due now. And a disconnection? Nothing but bills, Gromit. I can't look at these before I have my breakfast. If we don't find some steady customers soon, I don't know how we'll make ends meet. Oh, all right, then. I'll open one. But just the one? Hmm... Seems your subscription to Marrow Growers Monthly is up for renewal. Don't suppose you'd consider cancelling? Thought not. Oh, better pay up then. Now, where did I put me pen? Ah, yes. That dog is getting a little too independent, if you ask me. Hi, old Wallace. Daniel here. Sorry to leave a message, but it's about that incident in the shop. That blinking mechanical mouse of yours has put me in a right pickle. I mean, it may be a sniffer 3000 with advanced cheese tracking capabilities, but it chewed through all me fancy tail and me red lister, too. Now, I know we've always been on good terms, but this morning I find myself not inconsiderably discombobulated, and I can't let it happen again, I'm afraid. I'm sorry to say that with the deepest regret and following police advice, you and your blinking contraptions are banned from my establishment until further notice. Just a reminder, Gromit, in case you've forgotten. How's that egg coming, Gromit?
after the toast again. The little tyke always manages to time his heists to perfection. Cracking eggs, Chuck. But I can't tuck in until I get my toast and honey. Done to a turn. My compliments to the chef. Honey, how sweet of you, Gromit. <laughs> now that's what I call a breakfast feast. Wasn't so difficult, was it, lad? With a hearty plate of eggs and toast under me belt, I'm ready to take on the world. Gromit, I've a strange feeling this is the day our fortunes are going to change. Morning, Wallace. May I have a word? Um, uh, if it's about yesterday's, uh, um, little mishap... Oh, no, you see... I can assure you it, it was an accident, Mr. Penner, and I'll certainly pay for the damage to your grocery shop. I was just putting the Sniffer 3000 through its paces. It's still only a prototype, you know. Oh, I realize that, Mr. Wallace. And what better place to test out a cheese detector than in a shop with such an excellent selection of cheeses? Happened. But you'll still have to pay for the damage, I'm afraid. Yes, of course. I'll put it all right. Though funds are, how can I put this, a little tight at the moment. Only until our new business is up and running. Aye, well, that's what I'm here to talk about. I understand you and Gromit are in the honey business now. Fresh deliveries daily, from B to you. <laughs> Ah, well, perhaps I can help you get on your feet. I'm having my annual sounding of the Crumpets Festival, and I'm clean out of honey. Can you deliver 50 gallons? 50 gallons? By tonight? Tonight? It'll more than cancel your debt, and it'll be good advertising for you. What do you say? I say... I say yes! We're in business, lad! Heads up, no time for slacking. From B to you has landed its first major order. 50 gallons of honey by tomorrow. I want this place to be a hive of activity. It's your chance to show the world what sort of workers you are. They're certainly buzzing with excitement. Or maybe they're hungry. Did you remember to feed them this morning, Gromit? Never mind, lad. I'll do it. Mm. 
bees love my motivational posters. Nothing like an inspirational poster to boost worker productivity. For some reason, my boys aren't terribly fond of this one. Look alive in there. Ah. No honey yet, Gromit. I wonder if there's something else I need to do to prime the pump, as it were. The bees are expecting a big supper. The remote control for my sniffer 3000. Too bad about the teasing problems. Still, this might come in handy. Flowers. The perfect meal for a hungry hive. Uh, bon appetit. Oh. Hmm. Not exactly a flood, is it? Hmm. Flowers, Gromit. That's the weak link in our production chain. We need more flowers. My workers are very devoted to their queen. Ah, there's the hatch from me rocket ship. Remember that moon holiday, Gromit? Now where can I find a whole lot of flowers in a hurry? Beautiful morning, Mr. Wallace. I'm pleased to see you've emerged from your subterranean lair. Been doing a spot of gardening, have you, Miss Flit? Working my green fingers to the bone. But the hard work appears to be paying off. Indeed it does. Blooms everywhere. I call it my purple paradise. It certainly looks delicious. I mean... I imagine it would look delicious if you were an insect. You mean, if I were a bee? Well, now you mention it. You want to feed my flowers to your bees? That is, if you don't mind. How many would you like? As many as you can spare. Oh, you can have all you want, Mr. Wallace. Oh, much obliged, Miss Flit. Here. You can jolly well grow your own. Uh, right ho. I say, those roses look appetizing. Uh, if you're a bee. I'm sure they do. And they smell heavenly. But they're not here to be trampled over by your buzzing bees. I hadn't noticed those flowers before. I shouldn't wonder. They're morning glories. And they're usually tucked up in bed by the time you emerge from your underground lair. Their scent is divine. Attracts a lot of bees, I suppose. Swarms of them. But I don't let them linger. That flower hasn't bloomed yet. I know it hasn't, the lazy thing. Oh, but the way will be worth it. Oh? This flower will be the piece de resistance of my purple paradise. And the scent, absolutely heavenly. I'm simply mad about the purple pansy. No flowers in here. There's nothing growing here. And whose fault is that? You had a garden, Wallace, but you raised it to the ground to feed your silly bees. Now, you're making eyes at mine across the fence. But you shan't be plucking any of my blooms. Kindly reserve your green fingers for number 62.
I wonder what happened to his little cricket bat. There now, with hard work and a little luck, you should have a nice bed of flowers in two or three months. I can't wait two or three months. I've got a deadline. This evening. Ugh, you poor simple man. Nothing grows that quickly. I wonder. Rex Armstrong's quick grow muscle formula. Watch them sprout in seconds. Hmm. If it works on people, perhaps I could adapt it to work on flowers. Three miracle ingredients. Grow team, energize, strongium. Well, I need a miracle and fast. It shouldn't be too tricky to knock up a batch myself. Then we'll see who's got the grandest garden in West Wallaby Street. The hive will be humming in no time. Can't take an old soldier by surprise. Morning, Major Crumb. It is, if you don't mind enemy invasions. I beg your pardon? Didn't you get my message? Received intelligence of a major air assault. Expect the sirens to sound any minute. Hope you know where your nearest air raid shelter is. I do recall something about that, but Major Crumb... Are you sure you're not mistaken? I know, I know. I've made predictions before, but I'm not crying wolf. This time, I've got proof. A jar? It's what's inside the jar that counts. Incontrovertible evidence that the enemy is on the move. Does it? I can only see a snail. Of course it's a snail. But what's she trying to tell us? That's the important thing. Uh, what is she trying to tell us? Look at her, man. She's retreated into her shell in the middle of the day. And that means only one thing. It means she knows trouble is about to strike from the heavens. Law of nature, Wallace. Learned it in France during the war. Never wrong yet. Good man, Wallace. I see you at least appreciate the seriousness of the situation. Now, spread the word. If people don't believe what an old soldier has to say, perhaps they'll listen to the snail. You're looking at my case, aren't you, Wallace? Well, I suppose I was, Major. Bet you'd like to know what's inside. I am curious, yes. This case is packed full of government issue protein bars. Protein? Rations, Wallace. Emergency rations for emergencies, obviously. Been stockpiling them since the war. Enough nutrition in them to feed a man under fire for a whole day. And very tasty they look, too. Tasty? They're foul, but packed with high-strength protein. I'd love to try one. Out of the question, I'm afraid. You don't have clearance. And besides, protein bars are only issued in the event of civil emergencies. Orders are orders, Wallace. Couldn't you spare just one protein bar? Stop this insubordination at once, man! They are for emergencies only, when supply lines are down and a man's got no other way of keeping his strength up. But if, as you say, we're expecting some kind of airborne incursion... Indeed we are! Expecting the air raid sirens any minute! Mr. Wallace, I've got something for you. Much obliged. That looks like... Can it really be cheese? Indeed it is, Wallace. Eventually, Dale, your favorite. And am I to take it that these are... Yes, free samples. Go on, duck in. Don't mind if I do, Mr. Paneer. One for now. And one for later. I'm looking forward to your festival of crumpets, Mr. Paneer. I'm afraid you're banned from my store, Wallace. 
ever heard due to the devastation caused yesterday by your invention. I'm ever so sorry, Chuck. May I have another, Mr. Mayor? Go ahead, Mr. Vallis. Nature's pick-me-up. Dear me, too much gorgonzola before bedtime, I fear. Don't forget, Mr. Vallis, 50 gallons by sunset. Pity it's closed. Oh, I could murder a sausage roll or two. Ah. Hmm. Well, what were those three miracle ingredients again? Ah, yes. Groating, Energides, and Strongium. I used the last of me Energides the other day. To fuel up my sniffer 3000. Wonder if the landlord would be interested in subscribing to my honey service. No, no sense in looking for new orders when I haven't fulfilled the first. Hey, up, Wallace, love. How's business? Inadvisable. So, Wallace, in the honey business now, I hear. Oh, you've heard the buzz, have you? <laughs> oh, indeed I have. It's all over town. That'll never get off the ground. Stupid idea, if you ask me. And nobody did. Couldn't get honey out of a honey jar, that one. Excuse my husband. He's a right misery gut sometimes. Uh-oh. Hey, it's not closing time yet. My poor Sniffer 3000. I only just put the finishing touches on it yesterday, and it's already fallen afoul of the law. If it isn't Wallace, I had a notion you'd be nosing round the police station this morning. Uh, mo morning, Constable Dibbins. You're off to an early start today. Not planning any more visits to the shops, are you? Oh, no. Yesterday was a one-off. I'm in town on business. Is that so? Have you delivered the message? Have you shown them the snail? I'm not sure the snail will convince them, Major Crumb. If she doesn't, the air raid siren will. But by then, it may be too late. May I show you something, Constable Dibbins? Is it important? It might be. That's a snail, Wallace. Do you notice anything peculiar about it? Only the person what's holding it. Do you have a sweet tooth, Constable? Well, I have been known to dollop it on a crumpet now and again. Then perhaps you'd like to subscribe. I only procure my honey from a reputable sources. You can rely on from B to you for your honey needs, Constable. As our motto says, all the sweet and none of the sting. So long as it's nothing like your Sniffer 3000 cheese detecting device. Do you know anything about snails, Mrs. Gabberley? Uh, I know they eat them in continental parts. Well, yes, but do you think there's anything special about this one? To be honest, I couldn't rightly tell. Just bear with me for a moment, Mr. Penea. Major Crumb wanted me to show you this. That's a snail, Mr. Wallace. I know. Why are you showing me a snail? Well, it's in its shell, you see, and according to Major Crumb, when a snail goes into its shell during the day, it means we can expect untold airborne activity of an unpleasant nature. Go home, Wallace, and get some rest. Reckon you've been overdoing the inventing. Don't forget, Mr. Wallace, 50 gallons by sunset. Well... What do they have to say now that they've seen the snail?
Well, I haven't exactly shown it to everyone, but you must! Look at that poor lass! Not a care in the world, no idea that the alien hordes are about to descend. She doesn't want to face the truth, but it's your duty to shove it in her face! Squirrel Nick my table. But what if he did? Force never solved anything, Wallace. Kindness. That's what's called for. Nice squirrel. Uh, kind squirrel. Be a good chap and drop the tea bag, will you? Mere words, Wallace. Why don't you offer something to the furry deer? There must be something he likes better than tea bags. Realize this may seem a trifle irregular, but Major Crumb insisted I show you this. It's uh, uh, oh. a snail in my garden. Have you lost your mind, Wallace? Uh, I'm not sure, to be honest. And to what do I owe the pleasure of this return visit? To your mind at ease, Constable. All our bees are bonded and insured. Hmm, not killer bees from abroad, are they? Certainly not. They're West Wallaby Street born and bred. At summit, I suppose. Must be awfully hot under that helmet, I reckon. A sunny day like today. It's a trifle sweltering, yes. But danger and discomfort are all in the line of duty for an officer of the law. Though most folk don't appreciate it. Oi, come back here, you thieving rascal. That's my tea bag. I won't have you threatening that dear little creature. Not while he's in my garden. Oh, there's Miss Sniffer 3000, banged up like a common criminal. Oh, breaks my heart. That cheese detector's not a bad machine, just a bit over keen. It's all the energites in its system. Energites? It seems to me, yes. Energites is one of the ingredients in Rex Armstrong's Quick Pro Muscle Formula. I used my last Energite battery to fuel the sniffer. I'll have to get it back if I want to finish the formula. Fear not, my little cheese sniffing friend. Soon have you out of there. That mattress looks awfully hard. But just as well the sniffer 3000 goes into sleep mode automatically. Mr. Paneer will unveil my honey at tonight's festival of crumpets. Is that so? Well. If Mr. Paneer's prepared to take a chance on you, I suppose I can too. So, can I sign you up for my honey service, Constable Dibbins? I'll pop over to Mr. Paneer's and have a taste, if I like it. And there's no undesirable side effects. We'll see. How much does a helmet like that weigh? Eight pound and five ounces. Some days feels more like 80 pounds. I've got to get my Sniffer 3000 out of jail and my Energites out of the Sniffer. Oh, missed. The Sniffer's just trying to get to the cheese, but the machine sounds like it's crying. Oh. Almost brings a tear to my eye just watching. I wonder where Major Crumb disappeared to. Wallace! Thank heavens you made it to the shelter! I'd given you up for lost! Caught in the crossfire, were you? Any breakthroughs on the honey front, Gromit? 
I see you've met Private Grummet. Fine soldier, that lad never speaks out of turn. What's the news from above, citizen? Chaos and destruction? You've got to get your mind off the carnage up there. Would you like to hear one of my old war stories? Might help pass the time? Well, I hate to... Uh... Oh, of course you would. I brought visual aids. Uh, now, there's a sight. That's me posing with mother next to my 40 millimeter bofers. Look at the size of that monster. Big Betty, we called her. The gun, not my mother. <clears throat> Who's that fellow? That's me as a young recruit, off to basic training. How oh, I cried when they cut off my golden curls. But I cheered up as soon as they issued me with a beautiful set of dog tags. Best useful dog tags. If you happen to forget your rank or name, you've got it right there. Never go into battle without your dog tags, Wallace. <clears throat> what a face. That's me kitted out for heavy combat. That helmet took many a dent before the war was through. Without it, I could have become seriously loopy. Take my advice, Wallace. Never go into battle without a regulation helmet like the one in this picture. Sounds like you were quite a soldier, Major Crumb. Well, Wallace, why the past tense? Uh, oh dear. Once a soldier, always a soldier. Something you civilians will never grasp. And I'd be happy to prove it by charging into the fray. That is, if I were recommissioned and had a proper helmet with a cute little brim, and if I could find someone to take charge of this shelter and distribute the protein bars. Pardon me, Major. About those groating bars of yours. Rations, Wallace. Emergency rations for... Emergencies, obviously. Been stockpiling them since the war. Enough nutrition in them to feed a man under fire for a whole day. And very tasty they look, too. Tasty? They're foul, but packed with high-strength protein. I'd love to try one. Out of the question, I'm afraid. You don't have clearance. And besides, groating bars are only issued in the event of civil emergencies. Orders are orders, Wallace. By George, this is an emergency. Private Grubbit! I hereby issue you one groating bar. Guard it well, and see that it lasts you all day. Wallace, here's one for you as well. Much obliged. Grubbit, you're out of uniform. A soldier should always be battle ready. Look at the big fella next to you. He may be in a shelter, but he knows where his helmet is. Ouch! What did you expect, Wallace? You can't snatch a soldier's helmet like that and not hear about it. Gromit could do the job. Private Gromit? Can I entrust my precious cache of protein bars to a ponder? Perhaps so. He's proven himself a trusty foot soldier. Yes. If I am called away to the front, I'd feel comfortable leaving Private Gromit in charge. But I haven't been recommissioned. Wait! Careful, Wallace. You're heading into hostile territory. The enemy has clearly landed and most likely set up camp in West Wallaby Street. Who knows what the blighters have done to our once peaceful neighborhood? If you make it back alive, you'll have to give us a full report. In the meantime, eat your protein rations. The protein will keep your strength up, especially if you're captured. Brave lad! We'll keep the home fires burning. Cold toast. Shame to let it go to waste. Me porridge gun could prove fatal if it fell into inexperienced hands. Oops. The living room door's stuck. Oh, right. It's a storage room now. It's empty. I could have sworn there was a tea bag left. 
Hold on a minute. Strongium. That's one of the ingredients in Rex Armstrong's Quick Grow Muscle Formula. I need that tea bag. Mr. Cavalli. Gone away. Went to Timbuktu. Won't be back until spring. I, I, I noticed you received my petition for early release of the Sniffer 3000, Constable Dibbins. Yes. And I notice it's attracted the signatures of just one man and his dog. We're only appealing for natural justice. But your blinking cheese detector thingamy, what do you call it, destroyed an entire grocery store. Uh, teething problems. It's still only a prototype. A prototype? It's a villain, if you ask me. A diabolical device. You can see that in its face. My machine isn't evil, Constable Gibbons. It's just got a short fuse and a few loose nuts. Hmm, we'll see. I'm going to formally interview this glorified Tin Can of yours, and if it can convince me that it's not a menace to society, then perhaps I'll release it into your custody. Could those be... Uh, I couldn't help but notice the flowers on your window ledge, Mrs. Gabberly. Ah, lovely, aren't they? Bring a touch of summer to the town square. Especially the purple pansies. Always been partial to pansies, me. You should see the flat. It's full of them. They're blinking weeds, if you ask me. Can't abide them. Oh, go and suck a lemon, you moaning ninny. Ah. Oh, now look what you've done, you clumsy old! And open up that window when I'm yelling at you! All right, <laughs> but only to prove your insults don't get to me anymore. <laughs> I can deflect them all. Is that so? Pardon me, Mrs. Gabberly. I wonder, uh, that is, could you spare a... Sorry? Give me a verb, Wallace. An action word. Oh, uh, playing a word game, are we? In a manner of speaking. Oh, well, let's see. A verb. Savage can be a verb. Ooh, I like that. That's a good one. Now I need a thing. A thing? Aye, you know, something physical you could touch. Something I can touch? Turkey? Why not? Now a descriptive word, if you please. Hmm. Uh, mild? Oh, oh, oh that's a corker, that is. <laughs> Last one. Nearly done. I need another thing. Or like a person or animal. A person or animal? Hmm, now, let me see now. Gentlemen? Yes, that's a thing. What is it now? Go, oh, savage! A turkey, you mild gentleman! Hey! You do know how to wound a bloke, Winnie! Eee! Ha ha! Got him that time! Serves him right for being such a grumpy old granddad! Would you mind, uh, if I, uh, that is, could you see your way fit to lending me that pot of pansies, Mrs. Gabberly, uh, for business purposes? Business purposes? Well, be my guest. I've got bunches of them. That's the racket Gromit used when he took the cup at the Brambleton Open, K9 Division. Mmm, last night's bedtime snack. Gorgonzola makes a nice change from Wensleydale. Oh, hot as blazes out here it is. Can you 
you see fit to grant my appeal, Constable Dibbins? Not on your Nelly. That heap of nuts and bolts is now but trouble. Could you give me a single straight answer when I tried to interrogate it? It only responds to certain commands. I know, I programmed it. Perhaps you could try a gentler approach? Well, I'll have another chat with it. More friendly like. Oh, yes. Oh, much obliged, Constable Dibbins. I ain't promising nothing, mind. We had a little chat. Look at me when I'm talking to you. That's more like it. Now you've had time to think, what can you tell me about what happened yesterday? Feel bad about what you did, do you? He's weeping. Maybe this contraption's got feelings after all. Now, I want a truthful answer. If I release you from custody, will you do it again? Well, I'll be done. The prisoner has been interviewed. Yes. And having exhibited signs of repentance, I am prepared to release you into your protective custody. Provided, Wallace, you give me an assurance that you'll keep your blinking eye on him. Or it. Or whatever he answers to. Oh, I'll keep an eye on him, Constable Dibbins. You have my word on that. Purple pansies. Pucker pollen producers, I'll bet. Oh, yes. They positively drip with pollen. Sweet enough to drive a bee wild with desire. But your bees aren't getting a drop. Not from my garden, anyway. Drop that tea bag, you tyke! And you can drop your fist, Mr. Wallace. Here you are, little fella. Try some toast. Yes, do feed him. I'm sure the little mite's hungry. What are you looking for, exactly? Miss Flit, if you'll just take a look at the pansies, I think you'll... I told you, Mr. Wallace. I refuse to let those yellow hooligans have the satisfaction of... Oh, Apple. You see? They're mending their ways. They just needed a firm talking to, that's all. Mother forgives you, you naughty little pansies. Sweet satisfaction. Action, Mr. Wallace. Yes, indeed. Very sweet. So that's where the dog tags went. I'm sure Gromit will be glad to get them back. You see, Private Gromit, I told you he'd make it back to us alive. Our Wallace is a fighter. Bagged a few of those blighters, did you? Found these in the hall, Major Crow. Dog tags. I've been recommissioned. Bound to happen, of course. Can't leave good military material sitting on the shelf. My place is in the treasures. Mm, yes, that's all very well, I suppose. But I'd need a good, sturdy helmet with a cute little brim like the one I had in the war. Ah, Queen, God bless her. Sure, she looks thinner. Last time I stood to attention during the national anthem. I thought you might find this useful, Major Crumb. A helmet? By George Wallace, there's nothing like a good helmet. Makes a fellow want to put himself in the path of projectiles. If you know what I mean. Good heavens, 
I shouldn't be skulking around in a cellar like a frightened rat. I'm a soldier by thunder. Private Bonnet, I hereby appoint you officer commanding this air raid shelter. Here, you pass out the rations. I've got a war to win. to get my hands on a protein bar. Gromit. Request dispensation of protein bars, uh, soldier. The mixomatic will be perfect for whipping up a tasty growth formula. One unit of energized fluid for a creamy finish. One dose of strongium into the mix. <laughs> One generous chunk of protein to give it texture. Now to mix up my very own quick grow muscle formula. That ought to do it. Somatics all mixed up. Stop! Stop! Help! Grommet! Oh, thanks, lad. Checking to see if anything's sprouted yet, Mr. Wallace. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, Miss Flit. Really, I don't see what you're hoping to... Oh, I don't believe it. It works. It works. The homemade quick road miracle muscle formula works. We're in business now. You see, Gromit, look where a bit of enterprise can get you. If I hadn't found that flyer you chucked in the bin, I'd never have been able to concoct my miracle grow formula. And then where would we be? You really must be careful what you chuck out, you know? Uh, Blinking Nora! Oh, my word! I think I'm going to faint. This ought to be plenty of fuel for the old pollinator. Champion, that is. Fifty gallons of honey and just in time for my annual tea and crumpet festival. Pleasure doing business with you, Wallace. Always aim to please, our bees. That's the last of our bills, Gromit. And we've got just about enough left over for that little holiday we've been planning. This year, I fancy... Blackpool. Oh, oh yes, lad. I think our money troubles are over at last. Air raid! Air raid! Battle oh stations everywhere! Not this again. Excellent vantage point. Prepare for a crash landing, you devils! Sorry, Wallace, but I'm going to have to come near your dining room. Now, just a minute, Major Cross. No time to argue, old man. The whole town's under bombardment. But here they come! <laughs> An egg from it. Giant bees! Heaven help the good citizens of West Wallaby Street! Civilians out! But that's an order, Wallace! Private Gromit, kindly escort this civilian from the battle zone. For Queen and Country, soldier! That's right, soldier! Help steady my aim! Blast! Yeah. Double blast! Thunder got away! Back in the air! Blasted! Bad the bounder! Try getting 
out of that one, fly boy! Got the blatter! Our beaters aid to you, sir! Blast and double blast! Bullseye! Back in the air! Blast it! The Faith Soldier! West Wallaby Street needs you! Good heavens, Gromit! You don't suppose those monsters have anything to do with our honey-making operation, do you? Bumbling egg! My quick-grow formula! It didn't just affect the flowers! Just hope it's a wrong number and not more bad news! Mr. Paneer, uh, well, of course you're upset. Being dive-bombed by giant bees isn't good for any business. Uh, we're doing all we can to get the situation under control. Uh, normal honey service will be resumed as soon as possible. Uh, with normal-sized bees, that's a promise. There's a giant fly in the soup, lad. And it's shaped like a bee. They're taking over the town. Time to read the riot act. I am their employer, after all. Oh! They won't listen. They're completely out of control. This funny business has a sting in the tail and no mistake. No! Do something from it! Hello, from B to... Oh, Constable Dibbins. Ah, Mr. Gabble here. I ain't much good at eating on Mumbai. But I spoke out a turn yesterday. You're not as daft apers after all. What I said to you, I'll take it all back. You're a credit to the town. Just a minute. What's this? Giant Biggin Bees! Oh, my kitty heart! There's only one thing can boot round here. What could have caused this? with the auto flip frying pan, lad. The timer mechanism is very delicate. It's liable to spring at odd moments. not about to let a few hooligan bees keep you from your business. Your master certainly made a mess of things with that sniffer watcher, call it. But yesterday was a walk in the park compared with today's mess. Giant bees! Ooh, blinking Nora. Look at Mr. Paneer, shut up in his shop like a prisoner. And all on account of a few blinking bees. You don't see Winnie Gabberly chucking in the towel. Didn't close during the Hedgehog Riots of 72. And I ain't closing now. Besides, where would I go if I did? I ain't going back to it flat with old man Gabberly. Not till he says he's sorry. Tossed out all my pansies, he did. Always gallivanting round that one. Can't sit still for a minute. Still yesterday's news, I'm afraid. Delivery man hasn't been today. Too scared of bees, I reckon. I say, 
Sir Geralt. I may be knocking on, but I ain't finished yet. For the love of Mike, Winnie, you want to get a seat full of stingers? When are you going to shut down that blinking shop and come upstairs? When are you going to say sorry for them rough things you said to me before? <laughs> never seen such a contrary old mare. Well, if that ain't the lemon calling the mustard sour. Is that you, Winnie? Are you coming back to me at last? Oh, it's just that dog. Moggy off your mongrel. And if she sent you, tell her I ain't gonna come crawling. Gabbily, don't beg. He's right gormless, that husband of mine. And with never a kind word for his hard-working wife, you can't imagine what it's like living with a stubborn off like that. Well, I'll show him I can be just as stubborn. I'll stay here till he says sorry, or the bees carry me off. Close the gate. Back your carcass up here, Winnie. Please close the gate. No. Gabby don't say please, and he don't say sorry. Never? To some, maybe. But not to his wife if he don't feel like it. Matter of fact, I did apologise. Not two hours ago. To me? No, to somebody else. Don't count unless it's to me! Ah. Yoo-hoo! Grommet! Up here! Now, listen to me, nice doggy-woggy. I'm trapped in this tree by giant bees. Do you understand? You must take a message to your master. I need him to get me down from here. Can you tell him that? Oh, uh, wait a minute. Give him this. It's a note. Ah, Mr. Gabble here. I ain't much good at eating humble pie, but... I spoke out a turn yesterday. You're not a daft but after all. What I said to you, I'll take it all back. You're a credit to the town. Well, biting dogs come limping home. There now, weren't so hard, were it? Is that you, Winnie? Breaking code of silence, are you? No need for silence, now you've shown a bit of humility. Humility? Me? Never. Oh, you don't fool me. You're just a big old softy, and I know it. Hey, I need me head examined, keeping shop open when town's crawling with giant bees. What's got into you, Winnie? Stay back, I say. Oh. Winnie Gabbley! Listen here now, my canine constable. It isn't strictly police procedure, but I might see me way clear to uh, deputise you. Just temporarily, mind, until this bee problem is taken care of. Would you like that? Right then. I hereby deputise you. Go get them, boy. Well, don't hurt them. That'd be police brutality. Catch them alive if you can. For the delay, Mr. Paneer. I think you'll find the streets are now be free. Thank heavens for the boys in blue. Now, I'll have to ask you to accompany me to the station. There's some paperwork we need to fill out. Nothing too bothersome. Happy to do my part. It's citizens like you what make my job a pleasure, Mr. Paneer. I know Constable Dibbins. Who 
Well, yes, like I said, he's very well trained. Right then, goodbye, constable. Good work, lad. Seems you took care of the downtown gang good and proper. But so long as they're still supersized, our job's only half done. I'd better get to work on a reverse growth formula. What's this, lad? An SOS note? From Miss Flit. Why didn't you show it me earlier? Hang on, Miss Flit. Help is on the way. Ow! It's no use, lad. The bees outside may be neutralized, but the ones inside are still buzzing mad and they won't let me leave. It's up to you, Gromit. Man, Private Gromit, help me bring these blighters down! Auf Wiedersehen to you, sir! Friend. Right where he belongs, the fiend! If you see that! Ha! Ah, blew him right out of the sky! That'll teach him! A thrilling sight for you, Private Gromit! Why, I feel like a young man again! Calls for a celebration, Private! Meet you in the mayor scene 20.
pacified all the bees, Gromit. Good lad. I knew I could count on you. That's right. Poor Miss Flit is still trapped in that tree, isn't she? I'm coming, Miss Flit. Oh, it seems I'm underdressed. Gracious! Hang on, Miss Flit. <laughs> So that's the story, Miss Flit. I'm afraid my miracle growth formula led to some uh, super-sized problems. I hope you're going to get rid of the infernal stuff. Oh, I am. And rest assured, all the bees have been dealt with safely and humanely. Well, that's a relief. But weren't you scared, facing down an angry swarm of giant bees all by yourself? Frightened? Oh, well, I, uh... Well, I was heavily outnumbered, of course, but uh, they soon saw who was boss and that the uh, sting was on the other foot. I was terrified. That's only natural, Miss Flit. Uh, uh, well, I had a twinge or two myself at times, you know, but keep a cool head. That's my motto. Look your adversary square in the eye and never let yourself get carried away. Pollinate a thing of Egypt to take all the hard work out of honey making. Oh, I'm beginning to think I should never have mixed this growth formula at all. I ought to chuck it away. Hey, easy old girl. No need to get excited. Put me down gently and no one will get hurt. Oh dear, nothing in the beekeeper's manual about aerial abduction. Help! me loose, we've got to get her to drop me. This little episode in one piece. More than I can say for the autopilot, I'm afraid. Look, the autopilot! Oh dear, looks like our troubles aren't quite over. Look out behind you, Robin! 
Keep her at bay. I'll try and lose her in here. I don't reckon we're going to lose her in this tunnel after all. Oh, perhaps it'll get too narrow for her to follow. Hmm, perhaps the honey could use a little kick. As if we didn't have troubles enough, I'm missing my favorite radio program. Thank you. 